I've only heard it anecdotally, but right, the reason so many people are zipping around in these brand new Camrys is that they're being financed by Uber. Uh, and then it comes out of their, their revenue, and then that connected with uh, the price slash is putting people in, in really quite a squeeze. Toyota Camry's done really well <laughs> in the last few years. <laughs> The Ubers and the Lyfts and the Gets and the Vias and the Gets and the Vias and the Gets and the Vias. Uh, and what do we do at the TLC? We license um, over 150,000 drivers now. Uh, that's about 90,000, they drive about 90,000 vehicles, transporting about a million people a day. And just a fact that, that often astounds people, a taxi usually puts on about 70,000 miles a year. So that's a lot of people, a lot of cars, and a lot of miles under us. Um, and what we've been focused on um, recently have been what I like to call the fundamentals. So the competition of so many different new ways of providing service and the challenges across the country questioning whether we should regulate this service at all have been a real, quite frankly, a good thing for us because they make us look at our rules and make sure that our rules are really only regulating those things that are fundamentals and that the market can do what it needs to do on the rest. Our rules are really only regulating those things that are fundamentals and that the market can do what it needs to do on the rest. And that the market can do what it needs to do on the rest. Um, and where I see it going in terms of where the drivers end up, um, I think that there will be a, a continued state of sort of competition. The Ubers and the Lyfts and the Gets and the Vias and the Gets and the Vias and the Gets and the Vias. So I think yellow caps are, I mean, drivers, they're kind of struggling. So, I mean, I'm wondering what do you think of that or like, and what um, TLC can help the industry better. So it's it's competition. So it's it's competition. It's competition. Competition. So it's it's competition. And we don't really look at how well a sector is doing by the number of cars they have. We look at it sort of by the number of trips they do. And the number of trips that a yellow taxi did per day has definitely come down. Um, significantly from its all-time high of like 500,000 in 2012 to 400,000 in 2015 for the year. Um, but that's still 400,000 trips, so that's, that's nothing to sneeze at. Um, so, that, so there's a significant core base of passengers, but it is definitely lower than it was before. And what else does competition do? Competition, um, it, it creates a, a, a place where those cabs and the drivers, the owners, everybody sort of has to sort of up their game so that they are as attractive as the other options that are out there. Um, but one thing that we as a regulator have to be mindful of, we have a lot of restrictions on the yellow cabs. And we have probably less restrictions on some of the black cars. And what else does competition do? Competition. It's competition. We have a lot of restrictions on the yellow cabs. And what else does competition do? And what else does competition do? We have a lot of restrictions on the yellow cabs. And we have probably less restrictions on some of the black cars. And what else does competition do? So I'm the perfect American. I'm About, um, you know, because of the um, unrestness and the competition, if few thousand family become, you know, jobless because of the um, business, slow business and competition and all this stuff, what is your plan to take care of them? Uh, it's like I said, it's not, it's, it's not sunny for a lot of people who've made investments, and I have to stress, um, been le lent a lot of money, and maybe they should not have been lent so much money. Um, and that puts the, the person who borrowed it in a, in a really um, bad, quite frankly, situation. Our, our goal is to make sure that there are, is service. And the more we can do to promote, to make sure there's enough service out there, that cars are out there, that there will still be opportunity. So um, 
everybody will have to adapt and change, and it will be a difficult road, but we're doing some efforts to sort of make it easier to be in the business and stay in the business. With, and you're right, there's sometimes you find those places where the law certainly doesn't mirror real life, and it doesn't make sense to change real life to mirror the law anymore. The Ubers and the Lyfts and the Gets and the Vias and the Gets and the Vias and the Gets and the Vias. Okay, so my question is, there is a lot of, a lot of anxiety going on in uh, yellow cab industry, as she mentioned, because of uh, Uber, yellow cab, uh, green cab, and um, I think you know there's about 40,000 family. They are absolutely depend on the yellow cab industry. They are, um, th this family, they are feeling like, like insecure in, in terms of the financial future. Um, do you have any prediction the way the the other service is coming and the yellow industry is facing the problem? What would be the face which is kind of beauty of New York City, the yellow cab? After say about 10 years, what would be the face of New York City? Uh, how we'll see New York City in terms of the taxi? So as a regulator, my ultimate dream goal is to make sure there's lots of different competition, so there's choice. Um, so I'd like to see yellow taxis, green taxis, as well as lots of different apps functioning. How you get there, I think, is, is the real question. And part of it, I think, has to do with how the medallion market is structured now. And there's been a lot of um, restriction in that market because of the way the price of the medallion went up. And there's lots of people, individual families, that purchase medallions um, at very high prices. Normally, people make an investment looking at the revenue that you get in. A lot of times, these investments were made without looking at the amount of revenue that was brought in. And much like we saw in the housing market, the two don't match. So I think um, the way forward takes a little bit of a dip or a lot of a dip first. And that is sort of right sizing the price of the medallion so that the investments make sense. And that brings new people into the market um, and it brings with them new ideas and new technology. Um, so we haven't, I don't think we've actually seen that happen in the market yet because there's very few transactions. People are really sort of seeing if they can hold on to a price structure that is not viable today. Um, and the lenders that, and especially the regulators for those lenders are aware of that, and they're not giving banks permission to make those loans in the way that they used to. So my dream future is that there's still choice. The pathway there is to really sort of unpack this medallion market, make it more transparent, and make investors make it somewhere that investors can come ease, come into easily and make smart investments into New York City because it is a brand, as I've said before, that it's. Hard, everybody all over the world knows it, so you couldn't actually get that kind of marketing even if you paid for it. Um, yeah. The Ubers and the Lyfts and the Gets and the Vias and the Gets and the Vias and the Gets and the Vias. So, so when the um, price war started, we got a lot of drivers coming in saying, you've got to stop them because we have no say in this. And now we're not able to make the same amount of money we were just making last week for the same amount of work. Um, and so there was some question of whether we should be regulating price in, that, in those sectors too. And, and to tell the truth, we haven't come to a decision. I mean, we'd, we'd really need to look at it more. How would Yellow Cab compete with car sharing companies with better price? and uh, service. Um, Uber uh, slashes price at 20, 15% of the flat rate on the trip to JFK is 52 plus tools. Uh, Lyft recently introduced a flat rate of 35 with um, you know, uh, Lyft line. So this industry really is driven by drivers. And though those prices seem attractive to passengers, they're certainly not attractive to drivers because they're making much less on those trips. They're putting in the same miles. They're using the same amount of gas. Um, so one effect of slashing prices is you may lose some drivers. Those drivers go back to yellow. Um, and then sort of the pendulum starts to swing the other way. So I think there will be this constant push and pull to sort of bring in new passengers, but 
somehow additionally save um, retain drivers. And they need the flexibility of being able to take income opportunities wherever they can find them. And so we said, yes, they should be able to drive for many bases. And so that's why drivers can pick up Uber, they can pick up Lyft, they can pick up Get, they can pick up a lot of different things. We do have a rule on the number of devices you can have. It's not always easy to enforce, but it's there. Um, on the technology side, where do I see this going? My dream world, I would see one portal, portal where these guys could all get together so drivers didn't need six different devices to look at different apps. And the gets and the vias. And the gets and the vias. And the gets and the vias. Um, Uber and Lyft recently slashed their price, I think only for competition. And then is there anything um, yellow caps or green caps are considering to be more competitive in this industry? Yeah, the price is a, is a complicated issue. We set the price um, through a public process, so anybody could theoretically come in and testify at one of our hearings about whether cab fares should go up or down. So they are a product of democracy. And, and, and just to be clear, when um, Uber announces, as they did recently as a promotion, hey, we're going to slash our prices by 15% um, to, the, to the end user, to the customer, um, they give all kinds of discounts and rebates. If you use a certain credit card, they'll rebate another 20% back to you, that kind of a thing. Um, it, the, the yellow and green taxi drivers don't have that kind of flexibility, right? I mean, it's, it's established by, um, by the TLC what they can charge how much per mile, how much for waiting, and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, is, there, is that part of the, the legal discussion? Has there been a legal challenge to the, the vast difference between those two pricing structures? That hasn't been a legal challenge. I've had several drivers groups approach me after um, the, the price slashing. Um, on one hand, they'd like us to set a minimum fare so that you can't slash prices below a certain amount, so there's some certainty for them on how much they're going to make. Um, and the actual restriction on taxi drivers, yellow and green, you can't charge over the fare, but you could accept less than the fare. So the driver technically could accept less. They, many drivers felt that it was sort of one after the other. So in 2014, there was a, uh, especially drivers who'd signed up two years ago. They signed up two years ago when prices were well above taxis. Then in 2014, was it the end of, my years are getting all mixed up, but I believe it was the end of 2014, the prices came to the same as taxi, and now they're below taxi. So they feel like this is the second time prices have come down. And for those who made investments in you know large luxury vehicles, that does become untenable. Mm -hmm. I've only heard it anecdotally, but right, the reason so many people are zipping around in these brand new Camrys is that they're being financed by Uber. Uh, and then it comes out of their, their revenue, and then that connected with uh, the price slash is putting people in, in really quite a squeeze. Toyota Camrys have done really well <laughs> in the last <laughs> few years. <laughs> The Ubers and the Lyfts and the Gets and the Vias and the Gets and the Vias and the Gets and the Vias. There's lots of drivers on the road and it's harder and harder to make a living. When's enough enough? Now, and so that's why drivers can pick up Uber, they can pick up Lyft, they can pick up Get, they can pick up a lot of different things. And boy, I'll tell you one thing. I know plenty of companies that would love to have no rules put on them. Believe that the free market should decide everything. And if that were the reality, life in this city would be a lot worse, and that would be true in this country as well. So there will be rules. There's lots of drivers on the road, and it's harder and harder to make a living. When's enough enough? Now, when's enough enough? Now, when's enough enough? Now, are the, the Ubers gets and, and the, the Vias lifts. and the Gets and the Vias? It's been a tremendous undertaking. My staff is very tired. <laughs>